Welcome back to the cooking channel. Today we're going to cook meth ethanol. We'll get the obvious out of the way since everybody's going to ask. No, that is not real granite. So years ago, if you were to, and even now, look up how to do methanol mixes, 50-50, uh, 80-20, 100 percent is pretty easy to calculate these days, but uh, the 80-20, 50-50 is the more common, sometimes 60-40, but for this we're going to stick with 50-50 and 80-20 you would find different arguments between uh, when you measure it, you have to do 80% by weight, 80% by volume, and it, it just goes back and forth, back and forth. So what I did was I invested in a hydrometer. So a hydrometer is a little floaty device that you put in liquid, and depending on its content, whatever that hydrometer's density, mass, whatever is set up for, it tells you what the content percentage is. These are usually used for measuring alcohol, since methanol is basically an alcohol, it measures the content of the liquid that you have it floating in. So what I did was boost juice was a big debate for a long time. Is it 50-50? Is it not 50-50? I tested it and it was not 50-50. Therefore, what I did was we take a standard windshield wiper jug. It doesn't matter, they're all the same. Um, this one just happens to be from old RV Marine because I actually needed it during the winter time. And then I measured out and verified with the hydrometer exactly what 80-20 and 50-50 would be. Now, again, 80-20, 50-50, pretty common. If you want to run 100% methanol, obviously, you just put 100% methanol in. That should be good for you guys. But 80-20 is a good one. The reason you might want to go with 80-20 instead of 50-50 is a little more methanol content. Obviously, um, more methanol is more octane. Water is very high octane because it's not flammable, but obviously methanol can burn, so it's very high octane, I think, and nobody quote me on this. I think it's like 120, 130 ron, like the gas pump numbers you look at. So it works good, but if you run a lot of methanol, it can get very, very hot, your EGTs. That is, the temperature that's coming out of the engine's exhaust is going to be very, very hot, and you can melt catalytic converters because it's so dang hot that it just overcooks them. So generally speaking, 80 to 20 is a good number. Some people swear by 100%. By all means, you do you. I prefer an 80-20 blend because that water acts as a cooler, it acts as a steam cleaner, and it acts as a safety net when it comes to pre-detonation, very high octane. Again, it's not flammable. The less flammable something is under pressure, the less or the higher the the octane number would be. So in this case, water under pressure does absolutely nothing to make fire. Gasoline, on the other hand, 87 octane, if you compress it, it'll blow up well before 93 octane would, hence why you use that in the turbo application. So again, 80-20 is a little safer. 50-50 is really safe, but at the same time, you don't get a lot of benefits from the cooling of the methanol and so on and so forth. So that aside, I'm going to show you a simple way to measure out 80-20 and 50-50 using a common windshield wiper drop jug, a sharpie, and a tape measure. So let's get started. So for this, this is going to be my quick reference chart here. I do have posts online that actually show this, but these are our lines. The very bottom line is the counter, and then you just measure up. We're going to go ahead and we're going to make a mark at these points. So the first one is 4.75 inches up. So all you got to do is you take your tape measure, simple as that, and mark 4.75 inches. I prefer to mark here near this little rib thing. There's one there, and obviously there's one there. That just gives me more room. A, it's not directly in the way of the sticker. You can certainly remove it. It's going to be a giant pain in the ass. But this gives you more room to put the top mark here. But if you do it on this side, you're going to have to rely on the handle, and you're going to have to project your distance a bit. There's our 4.75 mark, 6.75 mark, and 9.5 mark. Some of you may notice that I accidentally put it on the stupid handle. That's my bad for turning the jug. So now that we have those marked, we're going to go ahead and we're going to follow up on the 4.75 with 50-50, with 80-20 uh, on 6.75, and full on 9.5. Then I'll explain the marks. Now just a note, if you're worried about these rubbing off in the future, if you want to keep this jug, you can take a clear piece of packing tape and put it over top of that Sharpie. That way nothing rubs on it and touches the actual marks, and they'll stay on there as long as the tape stays in place. Now the way that this works, these measurements were taken on a level surface using this jug's geometry, even with the tapers and all that other crap, it's all accounted for. 
So all you do is if you want 50-50, you're going to fill it until the 50-50 mark with methanol. If you want 80-20, you fill it to the 80-20 mark with methanol. Once you're done filling it with methanol to either the 50-50 or 80-20, depending on what you want, you fill it the remainder of the distance to the full mark with your distilled water. Now it needs to be distilled water, not tap water, not any other kind of water needs to be distilled. The reason for that is water naturally has minerals in it, especially tap water has a whole bunch of crap in it. Talking calcium, iron, potassium, and some other random stuff, chlorine, and so on. You do not want that in your engine. It will turn into a mineral and start causing all sorts of problems. You want distilled water. Any grocery store you go to, this stuff's like a dollar or something a gallon. It used to be cheaper, but that's the world we live in now. So, fill it to here. So if I was making 50-50, I'd fill it right to there with methanol. After that, I'm going to fill it up to here with water. That's it. You're done. If I was making 80-20, I'd fill it up to here with methanol. After that, I'd fill it up to here with distilled water, and I'm done. Now, what I would recommend is after you do that, put the cap on, and then you're going to want to do the stirred, not shaken method. That is, fill it up, and then just swath it back and forth. I'm not going to do it with this one because there's some water in there, but... All you do is just flip it over gently, flip it over gently, flip it over gently, a couple times, four or five times. That'll make sure everything kind of binds itself together. Now it is worth noting that methanol does tend to absorb water. So if you were to put this in a tank and it sits for an extended period of time, it's going to slowly and surely either evaporate off methanol or bring in water to itself, which is then going to obviously lower your percentage. So that's the simple, simple method of being able to do it, remember to filter your methanol when it comes out of the container. It does not matter if it's VP Racing or some other random brand or anything else. If it's not lab quality methanol, you need to run it through a filter. So it would be a good idea to have a filter in line before your methanol pump. But you can buy filters online. You want to make sure that it is a methanol stable material. Some filters will melt. If you don't know, take the filter material, dip it in methanol, pure methanol, and just let it sit for a minute, see if the filter starts to degrade, melt, catch on fire, explode, whatever. That way you know that when you run it through the filter, it's not going to actually bleed off. Most filter medias are a polypropylene, which this is an HDPE, which is somewhat of a polypropylene. Um, so it won't, shouldn't have any problems with a polypropylene filter, but it's always a good thing to check. If you don't know how to look it up, you just go, oh, look at the filter material, it says polypropylene. You go, polypropylene, methanol, and then Google it, and it'll show you usually like a, a compatibility, a percentage of risk, whatever. Most things that have any sensitivity is when you keep it in a container made out of that material for an extended period of time. So if you just drain it through, you're done. So filter your methanol before you put it in here so that you don't get any rust deposits, dirt, dust, whatever might have collected in the can when they bottled it, or what might have come off the interior of the can when you poured it out. And then, simple, fill it to the methanol mark that you want, fill it the remainder of the way with water, Give it a couple of little flippy flippies and you're done.